Greetings. This is an introduction to R. So f what is R? R is a statistics program that's widely used around the world. First step is obviously to download it. So you can download it at a website called rproject.org. And if we head over there, you'll see it's a pretty simple website. Uh, on the left, you'll see a link for downloading it. Once you select this, you'll need to choose a location that's closest to you, so in this case, Toronto. Um, download it for the appropriate operating system that you're using, so Mac or Windows or Linux. In my case, it's Windows. Once I've selected that, it recommends that you download um, Base, as this is what you want to install for the first time. And of course, you can just simply click the download link, and right there is where you can save it and install it on your computer. So once you've gotten that out of the way, the next step is to obviously open it. So if we open up R on my computer, you see all this pop up. So R is a pretty simple program in that it doesn't use a lot of fancy um, graphics or it, it doesn't spread instructions all over your face. But part of the challenge is because it's so open and it uses a rather <laughs> computer programming like language in order to do things. This is why it can be difficult, but it's not actually that too hard to uh, learn once you get the hang of it. So, for example, um, the language it kind of uses is, say you want to add two numbers. So I want to add 2 plus 2. I would type in sum, and then in brackets, I list the numbers in, and we get 4 after we press enter. But, of course, we're going to be using it for more complex things. And oftentimes, our data is going to be much more than, say, two numbers. So first, let's set up R to make it easier to work with. First, we want to um, create a script. So we're going to go File, and then Create Script. This opens up another window in R. So what a script is, is something where you can type out things as if it was a notepad, and then you'll be able to use a command to run that line or your selection of lines, and then this will actually run it into the actual program. Uh, scripts make it a lot easier to figure out errors and to uh, catalog your work so you don't get lost as you're typing all this stuff into R. As you notice, there's not really a good use of space right now, so next step is to go to, to uh, Windows and tile vertically. This makes it so now your Windows, um, you're making better use of your space and everything that you type on this side. Uh, this, well, your instructions can be on one side and your actual commands that are running through being executed will be on the other. So in my case, I actually want this on the left side. So I'm going to do that again. And ta-da! So, now that we've created a script and figured out how to maximize the screen use, we need to import data files. So obviously, we're going to have more, much more than two numbers when we're doing uh, any kind of data analysis. And oftentimes, these are going to be saved in, say, an Excel file. However, R can't read Excel files, but it can read something called a CSV file. So first, we need to save this Excel file as a CSV file. Now, in my case, I've already done this ahead of time, but to show you what I mean, say you have some data right here. Uh, this is just some made-up data. So we have subject, mass, and velocity. Um, R is kind of picky in how it interprets data, so you, whenever you want to uh, import it, you want it in a similar fashion like this, where you have your headers on the first uh, row and the numbers below it. And each of them will be in separate row, uh, columns. So once this is set up, you want to save it. And in my case, um, I'm going to call it just test. And um, instead of selecting Excel workbook, you will save it as a CSV or comma delimited. So you do that. Yes, I'll save over it. Um, and then a bunch of stuff pops up. You want to keep it in this, in this format, so say yes. And ta-da, it's been saved. So our next step is to actually import the CSV file using R commands. Now, R, R commands can get complicated, but there are a couple of key ones that, once you memorize, um, will make your life a lot easier. So one such particular command is to actually 
uh, read.csv. So remember, this side is a script, and this side is actually where the commands will be executed. So on the script, I can type whatever I want, and nothing will happen until I actually tell it to run it. So now to explain the actual command. In R, you can often name things called variables by typing it out and then using this arrow sign, which is essentially just a less than, less than sign and a an hyphen combined together. So if I type it out, it's just this and that. And by doing that, you were basically saying, instead of running this command, I want you to save this command under a variable name. That way, um, you can simply type in the name of the variable, which in this case is name, in your commands, or refer to it for other commands, and it will use that uh, variable name to run whatever commands you, you assigned it to. So, our first step is to actually read, uh, import the file. Uh, we're going to call our variable name, have this arrow sign to denote that, and the command is right here. So, simple enough, it's simply read.csv, so we're telling it to read a csv file. Uh, then we have in brackets file.trues, uh, and, and then another set of inside and outside brackets, and a comma. Now this part basically tells R to allow you to select a program from a computer rather than referring to a specific uh, path. Then up next is a comma, a space, and header equals T. This basically makes it so when you import the file, the first uh, row uh, will be denoted as a header and won't count as part of the actual data. So it won't mistake subject as an actual um, number variable. It will keep these as separate titles. So, whoops, if we run this, as you can see, um, once I enter my command, file.choose is asking me to choose a file. So I save this test.csv in my desktop, click open, ta da. And now, if I want to actually see my uh, data, I can just type in name and then run the selection. And as you can see on the right side, it displayed um, the data that I imported from Excel. It's, and it's quite identical. All right, so that's it for the introduction. You've learned how to install it and how to import data, which will be handy for when you're actually doing analysis like ANOVA or Crusco Wallaces or whatever. So an important feature is actually saving your, uh, to save your work. Um, there's multiple ways of saving work in R, but the simplest and less, con less convoluted way of doing it is to save your script rather than your history. So this will save your script, but not the raw history which means when the next time you open R, it would be like a word file where everything is blank and you need to uh, re-put in everything. This can be useful when we work on multiple different projects, um, as you know that we'll be doing, uh, say, a university class. So to do this, um, we are going to go click within our script box, go to File, Save As, and then you can save it to your desired place, call it whatever you want. So, test one, two, three. And then, we can, now that we've saved it, we can open it again when we start up a new R, and all our saved script commands would be right here. And then if you want to re-enter it, you can just simply run your commands through again by either right-clicking or by doing Control-R. All right, that's it for the introduction to R. Later on, I'll do videos on how to do uh, analysis like ANOVA and other tests.